How's it going? So you may have seen this effect uh, somewhere on the internet, and if you don't know what it's called, it's called blob tracking, and typically it's made in Touch Designer. But if you don't know how to use Touch Designer or don't wanna pay for it, I'm gonna show you how to get this effect completely free in Blender. There's four main steps to be able to achieve this look. First thing we're gonna do is create some geometry that's gonna have variation in geometry size, which is gonna to correlate to the effect in the shading. Next, we're gonna use an attribute to turn the geometry into a texture that we can use in the shader editor and use that to kind of displace and glitch around the image that we're using. Because this effect is created with geometry, we can actually take geometry, convert it, and have them all connect with curves. Then all we have to do is take the one noise texture that is creating all of these movements, animate it, and you're completely done. So it is just as simple as that. If you don't know about the videos on my channel, I've started a series of After Effects or kind of 2D style animations here on YouTube. So you can check out several of those along with my Patreon where you can get a lot of extra content. Almost every month I'm releasing a new batch of tutorials and I'm always on there and releasing new things. So if you wanna check it out, it's linked in the description and you can get a discount if you subscribe annually. Now let's get into this tutorial. All right, so let's start with step number one. We're gonna go ahead and hit Shift A and throw a plane or any piece of geometry into the main workspace. I'm gonna be using Blender 4.4.1. We're just gonna open up a new window, switch this one over to the Geometry Nodes Editor. I'm gonna hit N, and then we're gonna get a new Geometry Nodes tree. Let's go ahead and delete the group input, and we're gonna go ahead and get in a grid. Also, I'm gonna hit the tilde key over here, go to the top and we're gonna go and get our camera, and then I'm just gonna bring it out. I'm really doing this just visually to fit the geometry to a 16 by nine space, which is what it's created by default. So I'm gonna go ahead with the grid and just kind of eyeball it. This does not need to be exact. This is just sort of an artistic approach to this, so exact measurements really are not necessary. I'm gonna go over here to the wireframe view, and right now we just have four faces. Right now it just has four faces here. So what I'm gonna do is just get them to be, get them to be relatively square. So we're gonna do six by four, and this is the first set. And just imagine that when the image is gonna be spread across, these squares are gonna be where those glitchy points go. So depending on how small or large you want those images to be, that's gonna correspond with the size of your faces. Now what we're gonna do is get a separate geometry node and switch this over to separate the faces. We're gonna get a join geometry node and then plug in the invert. And what we're gonna do is plug a texture into this to tell it where and how much to separate this geometry. If that doesn't make any sense, um, just follow along and it will make sense. So we're gonna go ahead and get in a noise texture. We're gonna plug the factor into the selection and nothing's gonna happen just mainly because the noise texture is not dramatic enough so we're gonna get in a color ramp to force that. If we switch this over to linear to constant and then just bring the white one in the middle and you can do 0.5 to make it perfectly in the middle. Now this is set up, you'll notice if we just get a subdivide mesh node and throw it right here, it's now going to take some of the separated geometry and subdivide it. So if you bring this over here, you can get more or less subdivision in the geometry. So now I'm gonna take the portion of the geometry that is subdivided, this line right here. We're gonna do another separate geometry. So really we're only gonna be dealing with the geometry that makes up the portions that are subdivided and we're just gonna plug it right there. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Plug the noise texture, the color ramp, just plug those right into the selection. Plug the inverted into join geometry and then plug a subdivision or a, a subdivide mesh node there. And now we're gonna have this interesting set. So if you switch this noise texture to 4D, you can actually animate how this looks. I'm gonna bring the detail to zero, just so it's a cleaner look. And now you can animate this subdivision look. I forget the specific way to describe this style, but that's how you achieve it. You essentially do two sets of separation or as many sets of separation as you want to get a really, really interesting set. Now that we have this, the point of creating this in geometry is to be able to convert it into a texture but to be able to go back and actually use the geometry that we are turning into a texture. So it all is created from the same set of data. So what we can do now is get a store named attribute node. I'm just gonna give it any name I want. I'm gonna do R just to represent that it's random. And then we're gonna plug the color ramp. We're gonna plug the noise texture straight into the value socket. And then we're gonna tell it, make, we're gonna tell it to recognize the faces. 
So now we're able to throw this information into the shading and look at it like a texture. So what we'll do is get a set material node, go right over here and just create a material and grab it right there. And I'm gonna switch over to the shading tab. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rearrange these windows really quickly. I should just save these, but I just, I just never get around to it. Um, and we're gonna go here to the shader editor. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and call that attribute that we created with the store name attribute node. That's gonna just be an attribute node. Uh, call the name, which was R, and plug factor into base color. And now we can see that texture. So if I were to go back to geometry nodes and go to the material preview window, I can play with the W and you'll notice we have essentially a black and white texture that we can uh, play around with. So I'm gonna go back to the shading and let's go ahead and put our image into this scene. So go ahead and pick any image or video that you want. Uh, either images and videos that will behave the same in terms of this glitching effect. So what I'm gonna do is if you have the Node Wrangler add on enable, just hit Control T. It's gonna give you a quick mapping setup, use the object coordinate, and I'm gonna click open and grab my image. You can see a couple of these images that I was playing with. I found these landscape images to look really nice. And then I'm gonna go get an empty and use that as uh, the object that creates kind of my texture coordinate or my mapping. So if you click the empty, then you can click the empty here in the viewport and scale it up. Now the image is uh, squished, it's kind of a square. So you can take your empty and just sort of stretch it out, kind of eyeball it. Um, I should just look at the original image, but I'm just gonna go by memory of how I remember it looking. And then one quick thing, go ahead and just delete the principled and plug the image straight into the surface. And that's gonna bring it back to sort of the image's original color and contrast and all that. So it's not a surface. So you can just go ahead and scale up the image to fit whatever square, I'm using a 16 by nine um, ratio here, and this is now our image. Now what we can do is right here on this line, get a mix color, and now throw that texture or that geometry straight into there, and you're gonna notice that glitch start to happen. So it's starting to move it around. It's combining your regular mapping with this new black and white value mapping, and it's gonna kind of play with it a little bit. And so we can head back to geometry nodes. I'm gonna collapse this window here. Notice there is a line going straight into the store named attribute. So what we can do is get a color ramp to play with that a little bit. So if you get a color ramp, switch it to constant, you'll be able to just get a couple, say something like, like this. And then I'm gonna go back to the empty and get that background image to be scaled properly. There we go. And then if you play with the W, we now have this image glitching around and it's pretty cool. What I found looks really good is if you get a wave texture with a scale of 0.5, it makes the images feel a little bit better. We're gonna do a scale of two on the noise texture. And it does, I do appreciate the behavior a little bit more. So I'm gonna flip my color ramp actually. And I noticed when I flipped the color ramp, you use the combination with the wave. I really do enjoy that movement quite a bit more than the original. Um, but really it's going to be up to just playing with it. You can just keep the noise texture, play with those values. Um, but this, I really, really like. So now that we have this, working properly, we now need to create that effect where all of those little squares have this red line connecting to each other. So we're gonna go back to the wireframe view. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and sever the connection right there. And we're gonna go ahead and get a delete geometry. And I'm gonna plug the the color ramp right here that plugs into the store named attribute. This color ramp is the one that crunches in those images to just a couple of those cubes, or a couple of those squares that glitch in and out. So I wanna use that same specification to be plugged into the delete geometry so we can actually delete that specific geometry. So what I'm gonna do is plug this join geometry, the one that goes right before the store named attribute, right after all of these nodes that created that variation geometry, plug that into the geometry switch this over to face. We're gonna plug the color ramp into that and then plug, and then we're gonna get a 
join geometry so that we can plug this stuff that all this this image information into it and this new information. So we'll just plug that there, plug this here, and you'll notice, I'll play with the W, it's doing that. You'll notice it's doing that. What we can do is just invert it with a color ramp. So plug that there and then just flip the color ramp. So that's just inverting that texture so we don't have to change anything. And then now you have all of this geometry. What I wanna do is convert all of these faces into uh, points. So I'm just gonna take these guys here, highlight them and bring them over a little bit. What I wanna do is to turn these faces into points. And so that's very easy. You can just go ahead and do a mesh to points and say, use the faces. And so now, again, if you play with that noise texture, we're just getting points. And if I were to plug this material, set material into the join, you'll notice, see those points are on top of each image square. So this is sort of, this is just to confirm, hey, this is working properly and once these points connect, this effect is gonna work right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sever that and go back. What we need to do now is to create a really kind of weird setup of nodes to get every point here to connect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play with my W till I have a few more points that we'll wanna connect. So right after the mesh to points node, let's go ahead and get a for each element node. And we're gonna need two of them. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna sever that, points to geometry, and then this lower green, plug him there. And then we're just gonna get another for each element node. And we're gonna plug this lower green into him right there. And here's what we're gonna do now. Let's go ahead and throw some data into it to get all of those points to connect each other with a curve. So first we're gonna need a position node. And because it's a for each element node, once we plug him into here, it's gonna create a position, some position data for each one of those points that we generated. Let's go ahead and get a curve line node, curve line. And the this point, we're gonna get the position of each point into the start of the curve line. So one end of the curve, we're saying, hey, start there. Now we need to get the other end of the curve to also connect to everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give myself a little bit more space. I'm highlighting and hitting G. Now we're gonna to need to get a sample index node. We're gonna get another position node. We're gonna switch this over to a vector plug position into value. The mesh to points is gonna go here, right here into the geometry, and then the element right here into the geometry. And then he is gonna represent the end of the curve. And then we're just gonna plug this curve line into geometry. And now all of them connect. So it's kind of a weird convoluted mess of nodes. If you recognize the setup, I actually did a tutorial on it earlier and it created this animation. So that very much goes to show, same process, highly different result, similar idea. So you can really take really cool things like this and use them for other things. And that's where you can start to take these processes and go, oh, I recognize that all these things are connected. I recognize that node setup. I'm going to use it in this completely different way. And that's how you can really creatively use setups like this that are very technical, but you can be very artistic with their use case. Now that we have all these connected, there's some stuff going on that may not be entirely visual, but essentially you may see one curve. There's really, I believe, three, one going there, one going back, one going back. So you have some duplicates that's gonna create extra geometry. So I wanna just go ahead and delete the curves that are overlapping because you can't even see it. And once we turn it into geometry, it's gonna be three times the geometry we need. So what we'll do is convert it to a mesh. We'll do a curve to mesh. And this isn't to create that wireframe effect that I'm normally doing with this node. It's simply to turn it to a mesh and allow us to use this merge by distance. And what that's going to do is just kill that duplicate curve. You couldn't see it visually, but in the data, you would be able to recognize that. This just serves to delete the redundant curve. Now what I'm gonna do is get in a mesh to curve and then a curve to mesh. And then you get a curved circle. I feel like I say this every time, but we've done this a thousand times on the channel. We're creating a wireframe. And then you just plug that there. And now if we bring that radius down, you now have this. So what we can do is take this set material node and just plug that into the join geometry and we're back. If you wanna kind of just appreciate it and see it, you can play with that noise texture 
And now there's a curve, there's a line connected to each one of those image cubes. So I'm going to go back here to the uh, circle curve and I'm just going to bring it pretty far down, something like that. And the resolution of four is really all you're going to need because it's going to be extremely thin. Geometry isn't going to be very noticeable. Now it's white. It's just white by default. What you can do is get a set material node, go over here, click new. We're going to switch it over to an emission node and just make it a nice red. And then just go ahead and grab that red right there. And now we have these red lines. I'm going to go say maybe 0 0.05 might be good. I would even go even uh, thinner on this. And then we need one more thing. I want to have these little cubes, um, these little planes at each connection. So what I'm going to do is right here on the node that says mesh to points, what I'm going to do, we're going to get an instance on points node and just plug him into the points plug him into the join geometry and get a grid. And you're not going to see anything. It needs to be, we're going to get a transform geometry node just to kind of bring it up a slight bit so that we can see it. And then you can just go also put that same material on that. So now we have the finished effect. If you go back to sort of the master noise, you can now see and appreciate this effect. And all we need to do is animate it. Uh, because we kind of, I like to go the extra mile and loop the animation. We're going to loop the W on the noise. And so we have our timeline down here. I'm going to stick with 250 frames. It's going to give you about, I think a 10 second animation, if I'm remembering right. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring my W to zero. I'm going to duplicate the noise, get a mix color node, mix color node, and plug factor there and bring the factor over to the left. So right here on the W, you hit I to add a keyframe, hit I on the factor, and then we're going to go to the very end, and I'm going to say probably a value of five. And then we're going to slide this guy over and hit I, hit I. Now that we're at the very end of the animation, hit your W, he should be zero. Go back to frame zero and do negative five. And there we go. Now, we used a value of five and negative five. If you want it faster, do like 10, negative 10. If you want it slower, do like 0.5, negative 0.5. You kind of get the idea, but your values are going to create the speed of the animation. So that's really going to dictate um, how it looks. I would render this in the EV render engine. I think I'm in cycles right now. Yeah, let's just switch over to EV, press play. And you now have a really, really cool, finished, interesting looking touch designer effect. Um, and all points connect to all points. It's really cool. It's pretty useful, um, especially just having some fun and glitching some things around. So there you go. That is the full animation. You can get the project file right now on my Patreon. You can check that out linked in the description. Hopefully you learned something and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.